And basically right here is the area that I've got the rock clacks. I actually recorded video footage of it in case you guys haven't seen it. It's in my videos, it's called rock clacking. And I was sitting up there on a ridge hunting, bow hunting, and I started hearing rock clacks. Clack, 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 clack. And there was definitely a rhythmic pattern to it. So I had my camcorder in front of me and I hit record. And the camera definitely picked up the sounds. And I'm always out there with my camera. I'm always getting activity, so the people that say, if you have a camera, you're not gonna experience anything, they're just speculating. They don't know. They don't know any better, but it just doesn't seem to matter. Sasquatch is going to do what a Sasquatch wants to do. That's what I've noticed. Alright, so this is the area where the rock clacks came from. Alright, so this is the area that the rock clacks came from. And... I found something weird, guys. Check it out. Alright. See these rocks? They're placed in a pile here. And how I know that is they look out of place. Look, here's rock number one. Fresh leaves right there. Or not fresh leaves, but it's not bare dirt. And they're set on top of these rocks that are like in the ground but here's rock number two look at that see how there's grass and leaf debris rock number three oh my god oh i just got some rocks thrown did you guys hear that oh boy oh man a rock hit that tree right there. I'm not even kidding, guys. Okay, 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 okay. Let's put this back. Let's put this back. It was right there on top of that rock. Okay. Wow. I've never had that happen. I looked over and saw, I saw that this rock hit that little sapling right there. See that sapling in between those two trees? That one. Running up and down. Okay, so that rock. I'm not, I'm not exaggerating, guys, or making anything up. Okay, I was messing with this rock pile. I know that sounds stupid, guys, but look at this. Look at it. Okay, here's rock number three. I'm shaking right now. My, my adrenaline's going right now. All right, here's rock number four. See, that was fresh grass, and you can still see some grass, but see, it's like a cradle of grass and leaves. Should be bare dirt. See? Alright, let's count these rocks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven so there's seven Sasquatch in this group there's some big ones and some little ones but who knows maybe there's a grave here it's hard to say That really freaked me out. My adrenaline's going right now. We're gonna go to where this rock hit this sapling. I've never had that happen in my life. I'm trying to talk in the quietest voice possible, but I can't help it, guys. <laughs> what the hell? And that's exactly where the rock clacks were coming from. Exactly right across the creek, right here. 
after the rock clacks happened. I was like, well, I'm not gonna see any deer now. So I walked down there and the rock clacks just stopped. Nothing, dead silent. And I never saw anything, never found anything. I tried to find the rocks that he was hitting, but I couldn't tell at that time if anything was out of place. That was crazy. Okay. It hit this. Ooh, stinky smell. Dude, we gotta find this rock. I saw it. There's no way it wasn't a rock. It sounded. Oh my god. Sorry, I had a spider crawling on my face. So it hit this tree right here. And this tree was rocking back and forth after it hit. Okay, so behind this rock pile, see there's the creek, you can hear it, we'll walk over there in a second. There's a stick poker, fresh rock thrown right there, you can hear them in the audio recordings at night, it's not me out here, I promise, but see this stick? jabbed into the ground and it doesn't seem like it came off of a bigger limb it's the only one around yeah it's pointing okay so this limb is stuck into the ground right behind the rock pile and it's pointing across the creek see there's the rock pile right there all right, let's go. We're gonna follow this thing across the creek. All right, so we have a rock pile just right there on the bank of this creek. We have this stick that's pointing that way across the creek, so that's where we're gonna go. We're gonna follow the direction of that stick. And like I said, this is where the most elusive creatures like to go. Here's something really weird. I'm not really getting very far because I'm finding all kinds of strange things. Right. See this? That, that looks moved. I haven't moved it yet, so. No. It slid down the bank. That's normal. Here's the creek. Spider webs everywhere. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Alright, now we're like in the doe bedding area. Does like to bed over here. Like I said, up on this ridge, there's a bunch of cedars. It's like a big cedar thicket. And I think that's where they want to hang out at. So let's go see what we can find. Whoa, thought I saw a snake. It's a jungle down in here. You guys will see why I don't come in here. This looks unusual. Right back there is the bedding area, which is all thick cedars. And you'll see this tree bend. Seems like that tree fell on it, but it's got two of them. Two bends coming from each end. One bend right there, the tree that fell, and the other tree. but it's in a line. This arch is in a line with that 
stick poker I just showed you guys next to that rock pile. And on the way down here I found one of these but on the opposite ridge on the other side of the creek. But I didn't film it because I wasn't sure if it was this exact situation here or if it was actually Sasquatch. But maybe the Sasquatch are being a little more secretive. This looks old. Definitely looks old. So it happened in the winter time. I got 3% left on my battery. Dang it. I got my other batteries at the house because I flipped my Pelican kayak and the Merrimack and a lot of my stuff got wet, including this camera. And my GoPro was destroyed in the process. So I gotta buy another GoPro 9. I'm not buying a number 10 just because I have all the accessories for the number nine. I like the camera. It overheated, had a horrible mic, but other than that, got great video footage. Nice and stable, clear footage. So we're getting into these cedar thickets like I told you guys. It's a great spot to see a cryptid animal. I'll tell you that. They're on top of like fresh leaves. But Every time I come down this trail, there's always like rocks in the center really? or on the side. So I know like they've been here at nighttime. So like after my encounters, the activity like died down more and more and more to where it almost like disappeared. And I wasn't sure if they just like went somewhere else that was super far. Then I started finding the rocks and that kind of told me that they're around. And then I set up the audio recorder and you can hear them banging around and stuff. So there's not much sign, but I know they're around just because the subtle sign that I'm finding. But I'm not finding like huge fresh tree structures. It's just kind of an empty forest that's super quiet now. But I know they're around. I'll show you some stuff. Was disturbed by turkeys and basically I think they went down this ridge and across the creek. But it seems to be the main trail that the Sasquatch use, the deer use, and I'll show you guys when we get down there, but this is like something that was growing whenever I had my encounters, and it's called chanterelle mushroom. You can zoom in on it if you want, but it's kind of like orange. If you break it open, it's white like chicken meat, super edible, and it's really good. But yeah, this stuff grows all over the place out here, only a certain time of the year does it grow I think um probably around like May and then throughout the summer if it rains but yeah my theory is that the Sasquatch like to eat this stuff because whenever I had my encounters this stuff was growing everywhere and I mean all over the place and I thought the deeper that I go into the woods the more of it that I'd find but it seemed like it was only growing in this general area Ooh, what was that Squirrels are up in the trees, mm -hmm. knock them down. I've probably like, I don't know, I've killed a lot of deer in here, seriously. But this is like where they come out of, like the big bucks. And I think the Sasquatch utilize that area too. It's like a giant cedar thicket up on this hill way back here, but it's cool. I'm going to show you this rock pile that I found the other day. Okay. Here's the rock pile. Yeah, got one, two, see like brush leaves. Three, four, five. See the grass and that green leaf smash. Six, and then I think there's a seven. So, you hear that? Okay. Yeah. So, like, my theory is that's the group. They're watching, like, maybe the little ones, and then there's a big male that hangs out somewhere in the deep. It almost looks like. Like a galaxy. What made you think of that theory? 
like I don't I, know. I just sit around and think about it all the time. I mean, it's an interesting theory. I just well, I because the big one, like you're not gonna find him in an area like this. He's gonna be like in a state park, the size forest. But like they all hang around. Like this is the whole area. This is the entire map, and they're all spread around the area. But when they come down this creek, they check in. This is like a hotel. They all put down their rock. And when the Sasquatch come by, they know, okay, they're here. But I think like when they disperse from the area, they probably just toss the rocks anywhere. But when there's that rock circle, rock pile, that means they're around. That's my theory. But the other day when I was counting the rocks, I got to the third rock and I heard a rock fly across the creek. And you could hear like, it sounded like two rocks just like smashing together. And like you could see the sapling after the rock hit, the sapling just swaying back and forth. I saw it like bust out of the woods, but I never saw like a Sasquatch, but what throws a damn rock, you know? I'm surprised that rock clack didn't get a response yet. That was a pretty good one. Yeah, yeah. The reason I came down here other than scouting for deer was this is the area that I had the rock clacks. I was up there hunting that ridge and down here I could hear like smash, 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 you know? Mm -hmm. And then um, I walked down here and there was nothing. And it was happening for like a week or so. There was consistent rock clacks going on. I mean, close to, it's just like, what is over there? And you'd look, you just wouldn't see anything. And you'd walk over there, nothing was there. They'd just be dead silent. But I don't know what it means other than there's a human in the area. That's the only thing I could come up with. But it seemed like it was a type of, I don't know, like a Morse code or something. Like some type of language It's the best I could come up with. Definitely a human danger is what I, what I think. Did you ever hear the theory of that lady in, uh, I think it was Tennessee, how she was saying that she had them for like 50 years on her property. She said like one rock clack was like, where are you? Two was like, I'm over here. And three was something else. Yeah. Or a wood knock or whatever. Yeah, I've know. heard people say, say things like that. And it does make sense, but... I don't know. It just seems random to me, just because I don't understand their language or mm. what the heck they're doing. I mean, like I try to be, be like, oh, one knock means this, two knocks means that, but like I can never find like a consistent pattern. It's always something different. I was like, maybe it's a uh, well. I mean, it could be number one different from troop to troop. It, yeah, it could be number two. I mean, I'm sure it's not universal across the U.S. Like they have like some conference in California where they talk about we're all going to do the same thing, yeah. or two, maybe some of it's just random boredom that's let's hit I'm something thinking. it's just like more of like them displaying their attitude yeah there's no like frustration boredom yeah, yeah. it's like they get angry that you're around and they just communicate that way but it's hard to say if you know one means this five means this and so on i don't know if it's like that maybe that's just by the intensity of it yeah that's a pretty deep little thing over there. Yeah, yeah, we can walk over there. But yeah, that was a cool rock pile. Yeah, it is. I would have never noticed that. Yeah. Oh, and here's another thing. I turned around and I was like, whoa, see that? Yeah. And I think like this could happen. You can get a limb that jams into the ground, Yeah. but the whole darn limb has to fall down and it forces something like that. But there's no giant branch that fell that jammed yeah. this limb in the ground. It's just this stick, which is pointing that way. So basically they're coming down this ridge. There's a structure up there that I told you mm -hmm. about. And I don't know, it seems like it's pointing that way. There's the rock pile. It would make sense. That's where the big bucks like to bed. So uh, I feel like a Sasquatch would want to go in those areas that the deer want to be, you know, to get away from people. It just makes sense. And if they didn't want to hang out there, at, Maybe that's just where they want to cruise through to get their food. You know, if the deer are up there, that's where they're going. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Okay. See that thick area right there? Yeah. That's where the Sasquatch was when he was rock clacking that one day. And when I touched that rock two days ago, the rock came flying out of there and then hit this sapling right here. It was actually this one. This was like swaying back and forth. But it was rock on rock, like, I don't know. I, ne I can never find the rock though, so I can't say for sure. So how long have you been coming back in this area? All my life. 
Yeah, I was born and raised around here, so I know these woods real good. <laughs> yeah, this is like an area that I never come down into. Kind of just leave that for the deer. Across the creek here, you mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's like a, a border there. <laughs> but well, it's a lot easier to navigate in that oak forest mm -hmm. rather than down in here. I was like, well, we crossed it now, so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, I've had so much activity around here that it's insane. Those birds are alert in the forest we're here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's something over there. Mm -hmm. Remember something was moving when I said when we first got here down here. Basically, you, you have to be here for a while and spend some time in here. And you'll get some, some action. But it's hard when you're going to a new place and you got to leave in a couple hours. You know? But you never know. Yeah. We might get something. And that's the goal. I'm hoping that we can find something or experience some of the activity. But yeah, I think, I, I don't know, back here, there's not as much sign as there is up there by the house. And I think the reason for that is there's like funnel areas. Basically, the house, the driveway and all that separates two giant forests. So they have to come through there. So I think that's why I experience a lot of activity by the house. But at the same time, they are called the watchers. So. They, we're, we're their entertainment basically, and they like to hang around the house. It's the only thing I could come up with. You hear them up there like after dark? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Not as much now, but a few years ago. It seemed like they'd come by every two weeks or so. You could hear them right when it got dark walking through the woods. There you go, did you hear that? Mm -hmm. Where those blue jays are coming or squawking at. Same area. Mm -hmm. That's why I figure they probably, you're talking about every two weeks, they probably travel the whole area from here and just make their rounds. Yeah, it's hard to say. My theory is that like each area has their own groups and they're not like traveling widespread. It's more just going from different properties to another basically following the food. So they're always around, but where? Some people have said that they got like a 50 mile radius. That could be true. Yeah. Which because again, that's part of my uneducated theory. 50 miles is about right, because you take from, yeah. that's enough for every couple of weeks for them to make their rounds. Yeah, and it may not be like a big circle. It's probably like a big water hose thrown across. Well, you know, yeah. the map, and yeah. it's like, who knows where they're going. So. Which would explain them leaving markers, because they'll be back in a couple of weeks, and it's like, oh yeah, where was that again? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. That's yeah. what I would do. Mm -hmm. But I think they do a lot of their work at nighttime, so. We travel through during the day and find like 70% of their sign, and you know, we just think, oh, they're here but really you know do you have any caves out here what's that do you have any caves out this way or this over back? there are caves like if you travel down this creek there's like little caves along like these giant rock walls and stuff like that but they're not giant it's, the big ones are more by the merrimack yeah, yeah let's, let's go up here see what's going on i mean it's got the right shape right it's got the right shape that's probably not showing up on camera. No. Even like a perfect one. It's hard to see on camera. You gotta get cast of it. Yeah, don't do that. It didn't feel right. 
You're about to be squash food. You make a good soup. Yep. Turtle soup. You notice every time we hear those noises, it's in, all on the side back where the uh, blue jays are squawking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. It's like, are we being paced? <laughs> It's been about the same amount of distance from the same side the entire time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know so. That's where Patrick thought he saw something. I don't know, maybe we should go back towards my place and I'll show you some of the structures. Because hmm? I feel like if we go further, we're going to start seeing less and less sun. As weird as it sounds, they're closer to the property than farther. But yeah, that creek bottom seems to be where they want where they want to hang out at. A majority of the activity that I've experienced is right there on that creek bottom, that ridge, and all around the property. And you said that's where you hung that recorder? Mm -hmm. That picked up yeah. that sound? Yeah, the further I go, the less activity I, I experience. Like the deeper and deeper in the woods I go. So that noise, remember you said, is that fire or is that water? Yeah. Is that yeah. Was there just like a rush coming down the creek from like prior days rainfall? Like what rained. was that? It didn't rain for like a week before that. Because it's weird in the video you said, is that fire? I'm like, oh yeah, I can hear that. And then you're like, are those sticks? Oh yeah, I could hear that too. Like, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? It was tough because it sounded like all of it. Yeah. Couldn't make anything out of it. I think it was stick breaking, but I didn't really find like... Yeah, there'd be breaks. a lot of sticks. It sounded like a bundle mm -hmm. being just smashed. And yeah. I couldn't find anything. It seemed like everything was the way it was before. I don't know. Nothing changed. Yeah. There wasn't any fresh limbs broken or any real disturbance. But on the audio, it sounded like there was. So it's hard to say. Are you recording? Okay. Pause real quick. There's some like giant rocks way up there. If you keep going, probably another like mile, you get on these giant rocks and it overlooks this entire forest. That's oh, really cool. That would be sweet. Yeah. We gotta go out there sometime. Yeah, we'll go there in the winter. Yeah. And that's what I do during the winter. I come back to these areas and I break everything down. I go everywhere. And then I find all the sign from that summer. And then the next year, when it's summertime, I go straight to those spots and usually find stuff or experience some activity. But right now, if you were to try to look everywhere for Sasquatch sign, it's gonna be a lot harder. <laughs> And it more, can be done for sure. Right, but there's going to be also more that mm -hmm. look like it that aren't because it's just yeah. it's a numbers game. Yeah, and it's rough looking in the summer time. You know, there's a lot of insects out, and a lot of dangers. Oh, I couldn't imagine going through here like on July 30th. Dude, it sucks. There's some there's certain times of the year you just can't come out here. I mean, you can, but as soon as you get home, you got to strip down, get in the shower, and like rub yourself down with alcohol and whatever you got because you are covered with ticks and it's not enjoyable. Like you can't, it's not even worth it with the heat. It's over hundred degrees, super humid. But that's why you see my chair up there because I already have my little trail marked off. So, I, you know, I don't have to walk through all the weeds and stuff. It's just a simple area to get in and out and they have theirs. I'm not just like scurrying through all this stuff and searching all the time, you know, or else there wouldn't be Sasquatch if I did yeah, that. Yeah, and run them out of time. Mm -hmm. A lot of times it is good just to sit. You almost have to do your own thing. Like if you like hunting, hunt. If you like to look mushrooms, look for mushrooms, but you don't want to just like tear through forests looking through Sasquatch. You kind of want to let them come to you and there's like that boundary of interacting with them. I think that's where a lot of researchers fail because they're just like tearing through 
reporters. I'm looking for them. And as soon as they find sign, they're inspecting it. It's real obvious, you know, mm -hmm. Sasquatch know that they're being searched for. And then they're banging on every tree and making every sort of whoop and noise. And Yeah, Sasquatch always want to have the upper hand. So in that case, you know, you want them to knock around you and surprise you. You know, yeah. they don't want you knowing where they're at. They always want to be the ones that have the upper hand. They probably if, if don't appreciate the. Uh, they're not going to do anything. They probably don't appreciate me like scanning the woods and saying. <laughs> it's hard to say. Sometimes they'll do stuff. I mean, there's been many times where I've had the camera. You can definitely hear stuff. Yeah. That's a little woodpecker. Trying to find him. Oh, there he is, right there. See on that skinny dead tree, almost to the top. Let's get on. This camera ain't gonna pick him up. So, how long ago would you say that you noticed the first? Oh. We'll do take two. <laughs> but how long ago would you say you noticed what potentially could be the first sign of something? You said you've been here for a long time, right? So what was the first thing I ever noticed? Or like when? Approximately how long ago? That had have been like probably like eight years ago, huh. where I had this little chair. Um, I was hunting this drainage ditch, and basically I came back, and the cedar tree that was right next to it, perfectly straight green cedar was snapped like it was broken probably around seven or eight feet high and it was green like the top part was just laying right there next to my chair but I was like ah oh, Sasquatch you know kind of laughing it off but I so didn't, I didn't really know they were around I was just kind of laughing right so you probably saw signs before you actually heard, saw the sighting yeah because when you're a hunter you know the weather you're looking at the forecast and it's like dude that was a, a calm night zero rain wind and it's like what has the force to snap a tree this big around, you know, that high up? But at that time, my mind wasn't going to, to Sasquatch. <laughs> and then how long ago was the when you saw the one from, uh, with the white on its back? I believe that was in 2019. I'm not the best. So not date, too long. Ago. Yeah, just roughly. It was like July, June or July. And it was in the summertime. Like a lot of the stuff that I've had happen. May, June, July time. Um, when I go out to like state parks, I get activity in the fall. And then the further I go, there's like winter activity. But around here, there's not as much activity in the winter. I think they're around, but it's different. So at work, we took um, just as a, a project, we did take them out, but we took a good amount of sightings, areas, and months and times a day and we put it all to a spreadsheet and then we started doing different formulas with them to see if there's patterns in some areas there were really? yeah like Crawford cool. County was like more I think August or I mean you could definitely tell a, a, a theme on mm -hmm. some of those places yeah not all of them but one area I really want to check out is um Edgar, Edgar Springs that place is where's that it's like by the piney like when you pass Rolla on uh -huh. 60 on 63 South, um, you're almost like to the Piney River and it's like Sasquatch structures everywhere. Huh. But I mean. Yeah, I want to go check out. It's like, I can't, I don't know where it's at, honestly. It's just South. We, we should hit up your, um, we're talking about the, your Merrimack back door. Mm -hmm. Over right, what's the faces? So it kind of leads almost up to his place, that whole Merrimack. What was it, conservation? You said it was different than the state park. Yeah. We don't have to record that. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, the boundaries of that go pretty much pretty close to Dennis's, right down yeah. the road. Yeah. Same with, like, Little Indian Creek Conservation Area. It gets really close. Did you see how that, man, I didn't realize the map went across the street from where we parked. Mm -hmm. Like, on the other side. I'm like, well, shit, we right should go. Yeah. Road. Yeah, because yeah, I found a... A different map of it and it showed where all the and the wildlife watering holes were mm. like and there was one like a nice one across the street way up there i'm like well, that's where we need to go like <laughs> mm -hmm. that's where that sheriff from 
Sullivan had a sighting. It's a little white one. He said it, it was leaving Little Onion Creek and going into some private right there. Road. Um, that white one's hurt a lot down mm -hmm. there. Lone Dell. Yeah, you sent me that video of that girl. Mm -hmm. that was talking about that white one. A that that Lone Dell, Robertsville. Sightings, yeah. Or my Bigfoot sighting. The YouTube channel. I've heard a lot about the white one down there. Yeah, I've heard at least like 12, 13 stories about that white one. I don't think it's the same one. I think in some cases it is, but I think there's a lot of white ones. They're like um, possums or kittens. What's funny is they Dennis never saw colors. a white one. Huh? Dennis never mentioned a white one, which is funny. Those are all darker. No, he's got a story about a white one. Did he? Mm -hmm. I remember he said a he gray said, one. He said it was white and he said it had long hair. And uh, that made me think of that girl from Lundell. Yeah. Is there, I was like, dude, that's that same one. Yeah, because that's not too far from there. Mm -hmm. And Robertsville's just on the north side of Lundell, so that white one could be using that little eight-mile area right there. Yeah. Yeah, but, absolutely. Uh, I don't know what it was. There's sometimes fish in this creek, believe it or not. Wow. There's like a big lake up there, and when it floods over, I'll find fish and there's clams i found a clam the other day when i was down here so there's definitely food around and i think when everything's right and the right conditions are matching up they're in here can't say they're always here i would say those birds are livening up now yeah i never noticed them i mean what would break something like that because the sapling that size like You'd have a hard time pushing it over, breaking it right there. But there's nothing on top of it. And natural weather is not gonna. No. I wish that wasn't such a glare from this. This song. is um. Shoot, I can't think of the name. I think that's a hickory tree. Or walnut. Hickory or walnut. Either way, super tough wood. Not easy to break. I don't <laughs> know my trees well enough. Yeah. It's wood. The one you saw off the trail that stood up and walked off, mm -hmm. do you think you surprised it or was it just watching you and then noticed you were watching it? It seemed like he was distracted, like he was messing with something on the ground and didn't realize I was there until, I don't know, I think he heard me like stepping on gravel. And he just got up and just walked like it was no one else's business because he knew I wasn't going to come after him. He didn't run or anything, I guess is what I'm trying to say. But yeah, that white one I was telling you about, like, he came up from that bottom down there towards the house. But that one up that I just told you about, the sighting I had when I was walking back towards the house, yeah. he went down that way. So it seems like they're coming and going down that way. And it's like a really big creek system down there. And like big rock walls, caves with like a little spring and stuff. But that's Let's go I think look. That <laughs> it's a good spot. We can go down there. I mean, I'm already out here, I guess. Yeah. Rock number three. Rock number three. Rock number three. 